influential economist Stephen Roach agrees with the need for more opening up in China. In fact, he'd like to see it go further. I spoke to him last week from the IMF. Stephen Roach was Morgan Stanley's chief economist for 25 years and is now senior fellow at Yale University's Jackson Institute of Global Affairs and a senior lecturer at Yale's School of Management. I started by asking him about the underlying reasons why the U.S. has such a large trade deficit with China. Well, the U.S. Um, doesn't save very much at all. Our overall domestic savings rate uh, in uh, the end of 2017 fell to 1.3 percent of national income, lacking in saving and wanting to grow. We import surplus savings from abroad. We run big uh, current account and trade deficits to attract the capital. China's the biggest piece of that equation, but this is an outgrowth of America's weakness in saving uh, rather than uh, uh, a byproduct of uh, uh, unfair trading practices, in my opinion. So are trade deficits always necessarily a bad thing? Well, a, a trade deficit is a you know, mirror image of a, a nation's uh, macroeconomic balance or lack thereof. Uh, I think in, in the case of the U.S., our trade deficits are very much a bad thing because they reflect uh, the uh, unfortunate circumstance of a, a real lack of domestic saving. And it's hard for countries to grow over the long haul without saving. Now, we know the Trump administration has put a lot of focus on trade deficits. Um, and also, they've kind of, there's been a little bit of a question about the numbers that they're using when they don't really include services or intermediate goods. So would you say that trade deficits are a really accurate way when you're trying to determine the overall economic relationship between the U.S. and China? Well, all economists, myself included, will tell you that focusing on a country-to-country -country or bilateral uh, trade uh, uh, deficit is, is really not uh, the right way to go. Um, the United States last year had trade deficits with 102 countries around the world. China was the biggest. That number was distorted by supply chain effects from um, uh, other uh, countries. But even adjusting for that, uh, the Chinese piece was about uh, somewhere between 25 to 30 percent of the total uh, overall nearly $800 billion merchandise trade uh, deficit. But the way in which that <coughs> is allocated between China and others is very much an outgrowth of the uh, international specialization of comparative advantage. China makes uh, the low-cost goods that we want the most of. So then, do you expect these current trade frictions to really escalate into a trade war, or, or is there still time to walk it back? Well, I think there's always time to walk it back. Uh, a trade war, to me, is defined as um, uh, actions and counteractions between two countries uh, in dealing with the flow of goods or capital between them. By that narrow um, definition, we're already in the early stages of a trade war. The question is, will uh, uh, one or both countries come to their senses and avoid further escalation? Uh, I'm still hopeful that's the case, but um, uh, there's no mistaking the fact that uh, this relationship has become far more contentious than any of us would have hoped um, a couple of years ago. Now, let's also talk about the role of U.S. Treasuries and the trends that we're seeing in terms of Chinese purchases of these. How do you see that affect in negotiations, given the impact that they might have on the economy? It certainly does have um, uh, enormous leverage uh, through its direct ownership of um, $1.2 trillion uh, in U.S. Treasuries. It also has leverage through uh, currency policy. And it has leverage in, in taking uh, trade disputes of the United States to the World Trade Organization uh, and um, uh, trying to adjudicate uh, on those uh, uh, fashions. I don't think that China uh, opt to uh, immediately uh, uh, deploy its Treasury <coughs> purchases tool. Uh, that would only be an action of last resort. So if China were to look at some alternatives for its goods and sources, if trade tensions continue, what would their top options be? I'd like to see China uh, put an offer on the table for uh, a bilateral investment treaty, opening up uh, its market to um, uh, more um, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, even-handed investment uh, from American multinationals and vice versa, the U.S. offering the same to China, Chinese multinationals. Market access is um, a very important way of resolving uh, these trade tensions without further escalation of tariffs. And, and China is now strong enough uh, and big enough, so I think it can afford to take much greater risk in opening up uh, a broad array of its markets uh, to uh, foreign participation. The recent steps we've seen in financial services and autos are encouraging in that area, but there needs to be more. And this gets back to my suggestion uh, for a much more broadly based bilateral investment treaty.